Hello and welcome to part 2 of the Fully Differential Amplifier series. In this video, we will analyze the FDA's gain transfer function as well as its input and output swing specifications. Since an FDA can accept both single-ended and differential input signals, both scenarios will be examined. First, let's analyze the input common mode and output swing of an FDA configured as a differential input to differential output amplifier. I will use a numerical example to simplify the analysis. Assume that each differential input swings 200 millivolts peak to peak on a zero volt DC common mode and that the two inputs are as expected 180 degrees out of phase. When I specify the common mode of the input signal, I am referring to the voltages at the inputs of RG. The common mode input specification of the amplifier found in the data sheet is the voltage at the amplifier's input pins shown here. Also, assume that the output common mode of the amplifier is set to 2.5 volts. The gain resistors RG are 100 ohms each and the feedback resistors RF are 400 ohms each. We will analyze the common mode and differential components individually and then use the principle of superposition to determine the amplifier's complete gain transfer function. First, let's look at the common mode component at the input and output. To determine the amplifier's input common mode, use Kirchhoff's current law at either of the amplifier's input nodes. The equation is shown here. Solve the equation to determine the amplifier's input common mode or Vn underscore Cm. The input signal's common mode voltage was previously defined as 0 volts as shown here. By definition, each output of the amplifier is level shifted by the VOCM voltage which in this case is 2.5 volts. Finally, substituting the values of RF and RG into the equation and solving for Vn underscore Cm results in an input common mode voltage of 0.5 volts. A closer observation of the final equation will reveal that the feedback and gain resistors form a resistive divider network between the amplifier's outputs and the signal inputs, with the amplifier's input pins at the center of each resistor divider. The FDA's differential signal response is evaluated next. The input signal, the output common mode, and the feedback and gain resistors are unchanged from the previous slide. A detailed mathematical derivation of the differential gain of the FDA is shown here. Equations 1 and 2 are derived by performing KCL at the amplifier's input pins on both halves respectively. The final simplified equation reveals that for an FDA configured with differential inputs and outputs, the differential signal gain is the ratio of the feedback and gain resistors. Look closely at equation 3 and you will notice that each half of the FDA acts as a single-ended op-amp in an inverting configuration. When substituting the individual halves of equation 3 back into either equation 1 or equation 2, the two terms in the numerator will cancel and the amplifier's input common mode becomes zero. This result shows that the FDA's input common mode is purely a DC voltage as shown on the previous slide and does not depend on the magnitude of the differential signal. Now that we have studied the differential and common mode behavior separately, we can use superposition to determine the signal swing at the input and output. First, let's perform the output analysis. We know that the two outputs are offset by the 2.5 volt common mode set by VOCM and that each half of the amplifier has an inverting gain of 4. 
Each output of the amplifier would therefore be an 800 millivolt peak-to-peak -peak differential signal level shifted by the 2.5 volt DC common mode as shown here. The FDA in this configuration is fully balanced and can be simplified and modeled as two inverting amplifiers split across the middle as shown here. Similar to a single-ended inverting amplifier, the input common mode will only have a DC component and no AC component. As discussed earlier, the DC voltage at the input is fixed by the RF and RG resistor divider network and is 0.5 volts in this example. It is important to realize that the signal source is driving a 200 ohm differential load formed by the series combination of the two RG resistors. In a practical application, the previous driver stage may be another amplifier, so it is vital to ensure that the amplifier is able to drive the 200 ohm load without distorting the signal. Let us now analyze the input common mode and output swing of an FDA configured as a single-ended input to differential output amplifier. The circuit configuration is shown here. Notice that only one half of the FDA is driven by a signal source while the other non-driven side is connected to ground. The signal driven half of the FDA should have the same common mode DC offset as the non-driven side. Otherwise, the FDA will amplify the difference in common modes as a differential output offset voltage. In instances where the signal driven side has a common mode other than ground, the non-driven side should be driven by a low output impedance wideband DC source. A common solution to this problem is to use an op-amp whose bandwidth is similar to that of the FDA being driven. Alternatively, the signal could also be AC coupled by the use of DC blocking capacitors in series with RG. The same input and output conditions as well as resistor configuration used in the previous example will be repeated here. The DC offset at each FDA output will be equal to the voltage at the VOCM pin or 2.5 volts in this case. To help determine the common mode offset at the amplifier inputs, use KCL again at either amplifier input node and calculate the resistor divider transfer function as shown here. The input common mode voltage for this example is again 500 millivolts as it was in the previous amplifier configuration. As we did in the differential input to differential output case, we will now examine the differential signal response of the amplifier. Shown here is the derivation of the differential signal response. Just as in the previous case, the gain is a ratio of the feedback and gain resistors similar to an inverting amplifier. Now look closely at equation 1. It suggests that the input common mode of the amplifier is a scaled version of its single-ended output. We can therefore conclude that when an FDA is configured as a single-ended to differential output amplifier, its input common mode will have both a DC component as well as an AC component. Use superposition to combine the common mode and differential effects to get the total response. The amplifier output is unchanged from the differential in to differential out case. Each output has an 800 millivolt peak to peak swing centered on a DC offset of 2.5 volts. In the case of a single ended input, however, the amplifier's input common mode has both a DC component as well as an AC component. The AC component, as discussed previously, is a scaled version of the single sided output.
and is 80 millivolts peak to peak in this example. The AC component is centered on a DC offset of 0.5 volts. When configuring an FDA with a single-ended input, ensure that the extreme swings of the common mode input stay within the amplifier's input common mode specification. ADC driver applications may often require a single-ended bipolar signal centered around ground to be converted into a differential signal with a DC offset. ADCs typically operate on a single positive supply with respect to ground. A common misconception is that when the input signal is centered around ground, then the FDA has to operate on a split supply in order to not saturate its inputs and outputs. Depending on the gain configuration and the DC output common mode, the FDA may be able to perform the signal translation while operating on a single positive supply with respect to ground. I will use the THS 4551 in an example to demonstrate this. Assume a 2 volt peak to peak input signal on a DC common mode of 0 volts. Also assume that the FDA is configured in a gain of 1 with the supplies at 3.3 volts and ground. Finally assume that the output common mode pin is set to mid supply or 1.65 volts. Under these conditions the amplifier output will be a 2 volt peak to peak differential signal on a 1.65 volt common mode. Each single ended output of the amplifier will therefore have a 1 volt peak to peak swing centered on a 1.65 volt common mode as shown here. The THS 4551 datasheet specifies that its outputs are capable of swinging within 200 millivolts of its supplies or between 3.1 volts and 0.2 volts in this example configuration. The amplifier outputs therefore have sufficient headroom to either supply in this example. The next step is to calculate the signal swings at the amplifier's input pins. Looking at the feedback network with equal value resistors between Vout plus and ground, we can deduce that the amplifier's input swing will be half that of its output swing, or between 0.575 volts and 1.075 volts in this example. The THS 4551 datasheet specifies that its input pins can swing below the negative supply and within 1.1 volts of its positive supply. In this example, the THS 4551's inputs can swing between minus 0.2 volts and 2.2 volts, giving us sufficient input headroom in this example. Therefore, an FDA on single-sided supplies can be configured as an interface between a single supply ADC and a bipolar input signal. The signal at the input and output of the FDA will depend on the following factors. The magnitude of the input signal and its common mode. The amplifier's gain configuration. And finally, the output common mode of the FDA. This concludes the common mode and differential signal analysis of the FDA. Please take the quiz to check your knowledge.